Hi, I'm David Peterson. I've illustrated an edition of Kenneth Graham's classic story, The Wind in the Willows. And uh, just like I do with a lot of my illustration projects, I decided to build some practical models to help me illustrate and visualize the scene in multiple dimensions. Um, I wanted to share some of the models that I used for Badger's Kitchen. Uh, Badger's Kitchen and Badger's Home in general is one of those places that I think uh, readers want to be. They want to sit by that, that fire, they want to be in that kitchen, they want to have all that food at their access, um, and just a warm, snuggly place to go on a long winter. Uh, this is, is uh, Badger's Hearth. Uh, I looked at lots of the various past illustrators, Ingo Moore, Robert Ingpen, uh, Ernest Shepard, and uh, and 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 Michael Haig, um, and tried to come up with the the parts of the of Badger's Kitchen that made the most sense to me, the kind of things that I was getting the most out of the text. Um, and I looked at their versions of of the hearth, of the fireplace, of the arrangement of the kitchen, um, and and tried to come up with one that worked for me, worked on my own. Um, I also used my knowledge of antique architecture from my previous job, as well as. Um, doing lots of online research for kind of cottage country um, Edwardian style um, fireplaces and mantles. I built this one um, kind of cherry picking all the parts that I liked best. It's made it's made mostly of chipboard which is the stuff that uh, the back of uh, uh, sketch pads and, and uh, Bristol board pads are made out of. Um, so it's chipboard um, and then with some popsicle sticks and basswood scraps, um, the, the mantle shelf is actually made out of two shims. Um, you can kind of see how they, they taper. Um, and I was able to glue them together because I just didn't have a piece of wood that was that thick all the way across without milling something. Um, and I just wasn't, uh, I was trying to get done quicker than that. So uh, I improvised and used a couple uh, wooden shims. Um, to do the bricks, and the, the, the different types of bricks, I just printed out sheets of, of uh, a brick pattern that I found online onto copy paper and then glued it onto the surface of the, uh, of the chipboard. Um, I reinforced everything, like I said, with either basswood or popsicle sticks and glued the heck out of it. Now, the hearth itself is only one part of uh, the configuration. The characters are also sitting in matching settles, um, which are uh, tall backed benches. And to make those, I made them out of basswood. Um, same stuff that uh, dollhouse, a lot of dollhouse furniture and dollhouse flooring and paneling is made out of. Um, all of the pieces here, the ribbing um, and the details on the bottom of the bench, uh, are popsicle sticks um, with the round portions cut off. Um, to get the diameters for the curves, I used um, coins. I think that's a quarter. Um, maybe a, yeah, it's a quarter. Um, sometimes I use nickels and, and, uh, and that's an easy way of having to trace something out without having to use a, a circle template or a compass or something like that. Um, just use diameters of things that are around the house. Uh, if I have larger things to use, I, I usually use plates or bowls um, or the inside ring of a roll of tape. Um, but this way I was able to make not just one, but two matching settles. Um, I looked at a lot of architectural reference or furniture, antique furniture reference for kind of how I wanted my settles to look. There were lots of things about the, the curve of the armrest, the height versus the width, um, the paneling configurations, all that kind of stuff. And I, I kind of cherry picked the parts that I liked best to come up with these pieces. Um, these go either side of the hearth of the fireplace um, to create this nice little wooden, uh, warm area right in the center. Um, and then the final component of making Badger's kitchen hearth area was that described in the text is uh, uh, stuff hanging from the ceiling, all kinds of food stores, um, cured hams, braids of garlic, different herbs, baskets of eggs, etc. Now, because part of the point of making a model like this is so that I can look at it from different angles and kind of consider where I'm going to get awkward tangents, what uh, what configuration gives me the most visuals without cropping something out that's important, um, but without showing too much of something that isn't important, I needed to take those into consideration, those, those hanging food stores. So I made some. Um, now these are tissue paper uh, that were soaked in water and then shaped um, and glued um, just on, on regular 
twine uh, string. And then I braided some of it and knotted some of it to make kind of like what a braid of garlic would be, just, just as a reference point um, for the thicknesses and, and kind of dimensions. Um, and then I was able to tape it to the top of the hearth and move it to different positions um, or even rotate it this way and tape it so that as I, because I'm tipping it, uh, gravity's taking effect, but when I tipped it, I could see where those hanging uh, hams or braid of garlic were going to be getting in the way of, um, or if I needed to rotate it out more or lift it higher, um, all of those kind of choices I was able to quickly visualize through the lens of my camera using uh, several model pieces to get kind of the perfect layout and configuration um, for Badger's Kitchen. Now, it's a lot of work to put in for just one illustration, but uh, it was a rewarding experience and something that I think made the final illustration all that much better. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy Wind in the Willows, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.